I was buying ammo from Walmart the other day, and you know, you gotta go to the counter and the guy has to open the glass door and stuff to, to hand you what you wanna buy. Well, I was buying something like 45 caliber or something in, in brass, and I said, hey, uh, let me see that, that box of tool ammo you got down there. And he goes, oh, oh, you don't want any of that. That's, uh, that's steel ammo. That, that'll that mess up your gun. Again, another, that will mess up your gun story. So it kind of, kind of piqued my interest and anyway long story short I didn't buy the, the tool ammo just to because I I bought what I wanted to buy and uh, when I got home I, I said you know what I'm gonna see what the big deal is about this this tool ammo and why people are saying oh this stuff will mess up your your gun uh, obviously I've shot hundreds of rounds through my AR with no problems uh, people on on YouTube uh, have also shot thousands probably millions of, of rounds of tool ammo without any problem so I, I just I, it just one of those things that that irritates me when when somebody perpetuates a, a myth I mean I'm sure there is some truth to it at one time or another but uh, I just wanted to kind of set the record straight for myself and then kind of pass that information along on along to you so what I did was I got uh, some steel casings either I picked them up from uh, the the range or, or I have some myself um, the stuff I shoot is is this stuff called monarch and you buy that from a Sporting goods store in my area called Academy and it's let's see if you can see that it is made in Russia and uh, They also make a brass uh, And this stuff is made made in Serbia so one of the, the former Soviet states but they they it is it is a brass I mean and and I've never had any problems with it but uh, anyway what I did was I got some 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 different types of uh, brass uh, you got your I got traditional brass brass and I got the uh, nickel brass nickel plated brass now what I did was I cut it and you can see it's brass colored on the back there that'll focus uh, so even though it's nickel on the outside it, there's just a thin cladding of nickel but it's essentially brass uh, and here I've got uh, actually aluminum this is uh, from aluminum casing uh, CCI I'll read that there focus eh ain't gonna focus anyway my battery's dying hold on so I got some aluminum casing there and I got various steel casings so and I believe there is another one somewhere but anyway so what I did with these was I, I split them I took them cut them down and I well actually I cut the bottoms off just just above the, the primer hole and then I split them and then I flattened them like this because what I'm gonna do or what I did was I have access to a hardness tester and I was gonna test the hardness of these things just to prove that just because it's steel and because steel is yes traditionally harder than brass you can what they call anneal or soften steel to where the hardness is about the same or even softer than brass and the reason they do that is because one they got to manufacture it so uh, it's a common practice in industry and yes I do work in that industry to anneal hard steel to where it's soft enough to work because then that way it won't mess up your machines and then after that they heat treat it they make them harder well in the case of these steel casings they, they leave them in the annealed state that leaves them hard enough to to survive as a as a casing but not so hard that it it shouldn't ruin your your rifle or pistol or whatever your firearm um, so uh, later in this video I'm going to show you what the hardness tester looks like and and what the readings are and I uh, believe you're going to be uh, pretty surprised so stick around hold on first sample you see here is the brass casing side of the casing 
and it comes up at 85 on the Rockwell B hardness scale. The next is aluminum and it comes up at 71 Rockwell B. Obviously it's softer than brass. The third one is the nickel brass. It comes up at 79 just short of 80 and we tried to do the polymer side of the casing but it was too low and it didn't register. So we flipped the sample around and we did the bare steel side. It still has some coating but it came up at a reading of 90. Uh, we shifted it around a little bit and tried another spot and that spot gave us a reading of 83 on the Rockwell hardness. Uh, softer than the, the brass. So we did a second brass and it came up at 85 consistent with the first reading and so we decided to do the butt of the brass casing and got 94 and so we did the same thing on the steel casing and got a reading of 78 which was lower than the, the brass butt. So the moral of the story here is the steel can be made softer or just as soft as the brass so you don't have to freak out because it's steel that it's going to mess up your rifle. The, the polymer coating is so soft it didn't even read on the Rockwell scale so uh, in the worst case scenario if you had a batch that had no coating whatsoever it would still not damage your your rifle. Now granted um, being that it came from Russia and, and uh, I guess Serbia uh, the quality control is a little laxed, I imagine, but uh, uh, I don't imagine that they were too far apart from, from batch to batch. So if anybody tells you that the steel casings will ruin your rifle or firearm, um, show them this video or have them do their own testing. But as far as the random batch of steel that I tested, they were well within uh, norms of, of hardness for even brass casings. So that's all I got. See you later.